Data fetching is hard. It involves all the worst parts of JavaScript, validation, asynchronous behaviors, and error management. As such, getting data fetching right is really important. And I've seen a lot of people do it in a lot of different ways that, let's be frank, vary a ton in quality. One of the pieces I've seen the most is React Query, and there's some really good reasons for that. Whenever React Query comes up, I always see the same response. Why would I use that when I could just fetch in a use effect and throw it in state? Well, you can, but the reality isn't that simple. So I wanna take some time to dive into why you actually should use something like React Query and the benefits you get from having a good core data fetching solution for your applications. Without further ado, let's take a look at this awesome blog post by TK Dodo, why you want, no, why you need React Query. I wanna be clear, even though I'm using server components now, I still agree with almost everything TK is about to say. So let's break down what he's saying and why. TKDoto.eu. If you're already using React Query and you haven't read Practical React Query, get on that. There will be a link in the description. Really good stuff. It's no secret that I heart React Query for how it simplifies the way we're interacting with asynchronous state in our React applications. I know a lot of devs feel the same. Important piece here, asynchronous state. Notice how the word fetching hasn't come up yet. Sometimes though, I come across posts claiming that you don't need it to do something as simple as fetching data from a server. We don't need all these extra features that React Query has to offer, so we don't want to add a third-party library when we can just as easily fire a fetch in a use effect. To some degree, I think that's a valid point. React Query gives you a lot of features like caching, retries, polling, data sync, prefetching, and more, and about a million more, actually. I will go way beyond the scope of this article. It's totally fine if you don't need them, but I still think this shouldn't stop you from using React Query. Actually, this is possibly the first point I disagree with. If you're using a framework that has built-in solutions for data fetching and mutations, you might not need React Query. You might not, yes. Hopefully, he dives into why you might, because I obviously use these frameworks very heavily. I'm a big Next.js user, and I still find a ton of use cases for React Query around other things that are asynchronous. We'll dive into all that in a bit, though. So let's instead look at the standard fetch and use effect example that came up on Twitter lately, and dive into why it might be a good idea to use React Query for these situations, too. Fetch and use effect. Const data, set data, use state, error, set error, use state, use effect, fetch, endpoint, category, then JSON it, then set data, catch, put the error there, category is the input. Now we have theoretically everything we need to return this data. You think this code is fine for simple use cases where you don't need additional features? Let me tell you that I immediately spotted five bugs hiding in these 10 lines of code. Let's take a look here and see if y'all can catch any of those before we continue. The first one that's jumping out at me is order of events. If this fetch call hasn't responded before we change category. So we change what we're fetching. And then that second one comes back before the first one, whichever resolves last is the state you're gonna have. So if we have category A initially, and before it responds, we go for category B, category B responds immediately, and then A responds after, we get back the data for A, even though we're asking for the data for B. That's just the immediate one that comes to mind here. I'm, as I said, there's at least four more. Hint, it's not the dependency array, that's fine. Race condition. Woo! Guess the first one right. There are reasons why the official React docs recommend using either a framework or a library like React Query for data fetching. While making the actual fetch request can be pretty trivial, making that state available predictably is certainly not. The effect is set up in a way that it refetches whenever category changes, which is correct. However, network responses can arrive in a different order than when you send them. So if you change the category from books to movies and the response for movies arrives before the response for books, you end up with the wrong data in your component. Here we are. If books is requested first, movies are requested second, this set data gets called before this one, and you end up with the wrong data, with an inconsistent state. The React docs say we can fix this with a cleanup function and an ignore boolean, so let's do that. This is a fun one. If you have an ignore, then you can escape if you're not supposed to ignore. And then this return, if you're familiar with effect and the behavior of return for a cleanup, when category changes, this runs, category changes, and then this all runs again for the new category. So if you've set ignore to true, you change the category, now, when this responds later, it effectively is tossed out. What happens now is the effect cleanup runs when category changes, setting the local ignore flag to true. If fetch response comes in after that, it will not call the set state anymore. Awesome. Loading state. It's not there at all. You have no way to show a pending UI while the requests are happening. Not for the first and not for the f future requests. So let's add that. Let's handle loading. Set is loading true. Finally, set is loading false at the end there. Not too bad, but again, with the ignore, it gets a little bit more complex. Now empty state. Initializing data with an empty array seems like a good idea to avoid having to check for undefined all the time. What if we fetch data for a category that has no entries yet? We actually get back an empty array. We'd have no way to distinguish between no data yet and no data at all. This helps if we initialize with undefined instead. Data and error are not reset when the category changes. That's also important. If you change the category, the previous data and error shouldn't still be there. We should wipe those out. 
and it even be possible to have an error for one thing and data for a different thing at the same time if you're not wiping them out. At the very least, in this, we should be wiping the current error, but we should probably be doing a lot more than that. So here's where this is added. Set error undefined, or in this catch, set data undefined. But this still isn't handling when the category changes. We should have in this return set both to undefined. Also, fires twice in strict mode. It's more of an annoyance, but similarly something that catches new React developers off guard. If your app is wrapped in strict mode, it will intentionally call the effect twice. Yada yada, we've complained about that enough times on the channel. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, bonus error handling. Didn't include in the original list of bugs because you'd have the same problem with React Query. Fetch doesn't reject on HTTP errors, so you'd have to check for res.ok and throw an error yourself. Yeah, it's annoying this is the case with web, but I get why. I might make a custom fetch. I do that in a lot of code bases where it throws if res is not okay. Fetch then if not okay, throw a new error, fail to fetch, otherwise we return res.json, and then we have the then and catch. Notice how much code we now have for what was supposed to be really simple. We're at 38 lines of code. Apparently there's a whole article about why fetch doesn't throw. That might be worth making some content about in the future. Let me know in the comments if I should do a video all about fetch not throwing and the weirdness about errors in fetch. Anyways, our little, we just want to fetch data, how hard can it be? News effect hook just became a giant mess of spaghetti code. As soon as we had to consider edge cases and state management. So what's the takeaway? Data fetching is simple. Async state management does not. Ta-da. Very, very well put. And this is where React Query comes in because React Query is not a data fetching library. It's an async state manager. I've been saying this forever. It's really nice that the core React Query team is too because it's so important to understand the beauty of React Query isn't just fetching data from a server. I remember way back, like way, way back, possibly even four years ago, I was watching Jason Langstorff have Tanner on to talk about React Query and having my mind blown when I learned not only is React Query not just for GraphQL stuff, it's actually not just for fetch, it's for anything async. So if you need to async await for some, I don't know, AV devices like my webcam, which we do a lot for our web services like Ping, the video call app, React Query is a really good way to handle the loading case, the error case, and all of those things wrapping the complexity of your AV devices by just dropping the promise and use Query. We'll show that off in a bit, but I want to showcase the examples here first. As I said, when you say that you don't want it for doing something as simple as fetching data from an endpoint, you're actually right. Even with React Query, you still need to write the same fetch code as before. You still need it to make the state predictably available in your app as easily as possible. Because let's be honest, I haven't written that ignore Boolean code before I use React Query, and likely neither of you. I actually had, but it was obnoxious and I'm so happy I don't have to anymore. And with React Query, the code above becomes this. Const is loading data error equals use query. We have a query key, which allows it to be uniquely cached. We have a query function, which is just this function. Nice, simple, to the point, really clean. Only 11 lines, handles all of the edge cases, debounces, has really good caching behaviors. You can call it multiple places. Phenomenal. It's about 50% of the spaghetti code above and just about as long as the original buggy snippet. And yes, this addresses all of the bugs we found automatically. No race conditions to handle that. You get all the loading error in all those states. Empty states are cleared separately whenever you change the inputs. You will not get data or error from a previous category unless you opt into it. And multiple fetches are efficiently deduped, including those fired by strict mode. So if you're still thinking that you don't want React Query, I'd like to challenge you to try it out in your next project. Bet you'll not only wind up with code that is more resilient to edge cases, but also easier to maintain and extend. And once you get a taste of all the features that it brings, you'll probably never look back. I totally agree. A lot of you mentioned missing request cancellation in the original. I don't think it's necessarily bugged. It's a missing feature. Of course, React Query has you covered here as well with a straightforward change. Ooh, signal. You actually pass the signal from React Query and it will terminate this for you. You signal you get query function for it to fetch and request will be automatically aborted. I didn't even know that. That's dope. I do want to quickly showcase using React Query for something that isn't fetch. Here is some real code from the ping code base. You see here, we're importing use query and use query client from React Query. So what are we doing with that? We got a couple fun things. So this is an interesting hook I built in order to invalidate the existing cache values whenever your devices change. So if you plug in a new webcam or you unplug a microphone, this will invalidate all of your devices because we only know that a device changed. So I invalidate all of these queries. So now React Query will automatically refetch the data for all of them and it will rerun the functions it has to. In my case, I'm using the Agora WebRTC provider and it doesn't have a great React binding. I think it is better now, but at the time it was awful. So I have use query, string cameras is the key. It's an async function that returns the result of Agora RTC dot get cameras. And now I have all of the camera devices here. I also have a loading state and an error state. If I don't have permissions, I could throw an error here. There's a lot of cool stuff I can do, but you'll notice this is not fetch code. This is client side specific code that is a weird asynchronous thing. You'll also see this trpc.useQuery. The syntax for this has changed a little bit since where before you would have to pass the endpoint as a string. Now it's part of the trpc proxy object, but the result is still very similar. In React, trpc uses React Query to give you a really 
good asynchronous flow to get this data from your endpoints. So now I can use the same syntax and the same behaviors to get things from my API endpoints and from your device. It's so cool that this primitive is powerful enough that it's not just useful for data fetching. It's useful for so much additional stuff. And this is why it's hard for me to take people seriously when they say you don't really use React Query. But this is all why it's so hard for me to take people seriously when they say you don't need React Query, because you certainly don't need it. But a lot of the problems that we have every day as web devs benefit greatly from a pattern like what React Query introduces. If you're not doing anything complex with asynchronous code at all, yeah, buddy. If you're not doing anything complex with your asynchronous code, then sure, you probably don't need it. But the amount it benefits you and the amount it simplifies the experience working in your code base for everything from data fetching to weird local async functions is just so powerful that it's hard for me to work in a code base where I can't reach for React Query when I need it. Hope this was a helpful rant. My cat clearly wants my attention, so I guess I'm signing off now. If you want to hear more about cool data fetching stuff, I'll pin a video in the corner all about that. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, nerds.